This video is all about formatting headings and subtotals on pivot tables. So not only do they look great, but they also stay that way when you get new data and the pivot table refreshes or changes. Now, one of the things that used to annoy me about pivot tables was I'd get it set up looking great. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'd hit right click, refresh the numbers, and it's like, well, that's annoying. This has now jumped out. And it's actually very, very simple to correct for this. All you do is you go onto the options and there is one of the format options is auto fit columns. And if you untick that and make sure you still got the preserved cell formatting, then when I go to change the width of this column and I've got all my columns the exact width I want, now when I refresh, we don't get the column widths jumping around, which is ideal. One of the things I don't really like about multiple uh, column field pivot tables, like the one I've got on screen at the moment, is the way in which the titles show. Even if you go to reformat these, uh, so if we just wrap this text, for example, and even though I've got all my settings up, I'm not going to auto fit columns. I'm looking to preserve cell formatting. When I refresh, I lo it loses the format. The other thing that doesn't seem to work either is on the design tab. If you go to repeat all item labels, for example, it doesn't do anything. Whereas if, if I go back to the field list a second and I just swap those two, over sorry you can see this is what it's supposed to do it's supposed to repeat everything so you can see it all on every line so if i just wrap that again she's supposed to get something that looks like that but the moment you flip it over it doesn't repeat this so there's, there's something not very right about the whole format thing you can get around all of this any of this kind of issues anyway and one of the ways to do it is to create new field headings up at the top that are a merger of the existing ones so you could just use literally just type your own names in if you really want to but if you want to be a bit more clever about it what i tend to do is recreate all of this all of these settings then underneath. So you want at least uh, three blank rows. So above a pivot table, you normally have two blank rows anyway, because it's reserved for a filter coming in. So you want three above that. So you're looking at about five above the pivot table for a two row header. So first formula is, I'm just gonna use an if formula to detect if there's something there or not. And if there isn't, I'm gonna pick up the cell to the left. So I'm going to put, if that is blank, pick up the one to the left. Otherwise, pick up the cell heading. Right. So that is going to give me all the way across my sum of sales, sum of sales, sum of sales, sum of profit, sum of profit, sum of profit, etc. Right. And then I use the exact same formula below that as well. And then I'm going to create some kind of merger of these two. So the actual heading I want. If I'm just going to wrap the text on this. So I want my actual heading to be delivery truck sales. And then for this one, delivery truck profit. So let's do, actually, let's do this in several steps here. So I'm just going to insert a few rows. So first off, we want to know the length of that sentence. Uh, sorry, um, so that's 12. 12 characters long, and we know that some space of space is going to be seven characters. So if we do that minus seven, and it always will be seven. So we now know that we want the rightmost five characters of that, and that will give us sales. So it's a bit convoluted, but for example, if we now say we want that, and we want a space, and we want the right of that cell, 
that many carla. If I wrap that, you'll see it now says delivery truck sales. I can pull that across and we've got all our various things. Now that's all well and good, but then we still have this business going on here. So we want to take the format of that and put it onto that row. So yeah, we're going to write, write align all of that. And then we should simply be able to hide those rows there. So I'm going to use a shortcut keys to group that. And then we're going to uh, hide this group like that. And of course, if we now hide this above, hold on, we need to, all right, we've got some kind of difference between that and that. I'm not quite sure why, let's just have a look. Yeah, that's more like it. Right, and we can also hide that. So now we have our single header on each column and that will withstand any kind of refresh that we want to do as well. So this is looking much more like a kind of normal report. And if we do, for example, for error values show a zero and empty cells show zero, that straight away is looking like almost nothing like a pivot table, I'd like to say. Now, in terms of formatting individual pieces of information within a pivot table, you can normally, the way you click on things, you get various different sorts of arrows. So, appear. So, by clicking on there, for example, you'll see all of those headers have highlighted. So, I could literally just change the color of those. Perhaps we'll go for, say, this, this color here. We'll do something like that. And that will preserve on format as well. We refresh that. It could be, you could multiple click on several items, sort of at random and make the text red, for example. Again, as long as that will refresh, that will stay the same. But I'm just actually gonna undo that. Now, if you put the buttons back on, sorry, uh, the field buttons, one thing we can do is uh, collapse it all. So let's just uh, expand collapse, uh, collapse the entire field. If we remove the blank rows for the moment, we can click on that, highlight them all together, as long as we're only expecting to highlight visible cells, which incidentally can do by doing Control G, special visible cells only. You can then uh, change those to any anything you want. So I don't know, what, should, what do you reckon, maybe We'll go with like a very dark grey, for example. And then we'll go and uh, expand everything. And now we have like this kind of str <laughs> rather strange looking pivot table, but it illustrates the point. And we should be able to actually get onto all of these totals as well. Do that. And at the same time, maybe we'll change those ones back to there. That's the other thing we could do as well. Grand total would look way better if that had maybe a very dark blue finish on it. Something like that with white text. Make those bold. It looks like we need, now we need to widen that slightly. So all of this again is staying true when you hit refresh and then we can take buttons back off now we've used them for example. So yeah, you can highlight basically as soon as you've got that setting, say preserve cell formatting, you can format it as if it's any other part of the spreadsheet and we'll put some blank rows back in. I think that's actually looking like a pretty darn good report. So don't forget you can download the spreadsheet by clicking on the link in the description. You can work for all of this or just have ready-made examples. Make sure you check out the other videos on Up for Excel. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon as well. You'll get notified of the next videos coming out and I'll see you soon.